Okay. So um, this is a very special night. It, we're coming down to the end of the year um, with Lou at the helm. And uh, we wanted to pay and give special recognition uh, for Lou's service. And uh, so we invited a few friends and we're still waiting, uh, you know, hopefully the others will be coming on, um, but we're, we're going to start anyway. So um, <clears throat> Lou, we've, we've given everyone the opportunity to, to say a few words um, and give their recollections uh, of their relationship with you. Um, so, I'm going to start off and then everybody has been invited to um, post their or, or uh, express their reflections. So I just want to want to say what happened to everybody because, okay, there you are. All right. <laughs> so before beginning this tribute, you may want to take note of and listen for the marine science and nautical terms used here to express our love for the service and dedication of our outgoing Nesmia president, Lou Siegel. You will be tested following this speech. Woohoo, you know, Joel and I are gonna compete. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, I did that for you, Sarah, because I, I know I know you like you like Jeopardy and all these other things. So, so uh, listen carefully, everyone. So here we are again, the first time with Lou serving as Nesmia president in 1977 through 1978, lauding the accomplishments of our dear friend and mentor, as we say, may you have fair winds and following seas, but not farewell to Lou Siegel and to a wonderful year under his leadership during the COVID pandemic which saw never before imagined exciting and remarkable Zoom and in-person programs. And the success, second successful hosting, the first one in 2006, of the National Marine Educators Association Conference at Hofstra University. Hold on one second here. I can't understand why I can't get this. Oh, I see why. Technology is wonderful. So what can we say now that hasn't been said before? A lot more about Lou's lifelong work in marine science. We see Lou's hand in everything Nesmia with the unique support of an exceptional board of directors, former directors, and colleagues who in their own right were and are successful, accomplished professionals that were at one time Lou's mentors, high school students, who were mentored by him during their professional careers or who received Nesmi awards over the many decades. He impacted thousands of people over the years, students and adults alike. And even as of recent, aboard a whale watching trip with over 130 students, and along with other scientists and educators performing oceanography tests and hands-on marine science investigations and shipboard observations. They are all now the beneficiaries of the evolution of his marine science teaching career and his devotion and commitment to Nesmia and the stewardship of our planet. He truly exemplifies by action the mission of Nesmia to make known the marine world and to do so by encouraging the growth and exchange of instructional resources within the scientific, commercial, and educational communities. He has accomplished that and much more. It is with great pride that I tell people that I still know and see my high school teacher in my volunteer efforts with Nesmia and that he and his wife Flo are a part of my family and circle of, and circle of dear friends for I have known them since 1969. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, we, have, we all have our personal stories so I will share mine with you here today. 
My most endearing is a John Dewey High School field trip to Plum Beach on the first celebration of Earth Day in 1969, memorialized in Lou's many slideshows. It was a beautiful, sunny day that I still remember vividly as our class group cleaned up the beach, painted picnic benches, sang for marine organisms and captured plankton, and created beach signs of rules for the beach user, which assuredly then won the approval of the Parks Department. It was a memorable day that made me realize, as young as I was, that Dewey and Siegel were a great catch. <laughs> and the right relationship for me for the rest of my time in high school, and as it turned out, defining the rest of my life. We went out on field trips in every kind of weather, even to help clean up the Ambrose light ship in frigid temperatures. Those were the best years of my life before my Dowling and Stockton College years and my Peace Corps experience and service. Who can say their time in high school was wonderful and some of the best years of their life? Some can. And who can say that their teacher impacted their life and unique career choices and decisions as much as Lou had? I and others can, because Lou Siegel made it so for all of us who knew him then. The Lou we know today is to us a regional and national tre treasure. When he walks into a room, we become much better versions of ourselves, especially at board meetings and on field trips. Lou is a man of countless interests and talents, and we see examples of that on Facebook when he sails his boat, or still even today, when he gives a marine science lesson aboard ship or a panel discussion with Long Island agencies. Lou was recognized and honored many times for his contributions to Nesmia and the Long Island community and beyond those boundaries by Gateway National Recreation Area, a national park in Brooklyn, New York, and the National Marine Educators Association. He is a true leader and loved by all who know him. Since he and Flo moved from Massapequa, Long Island to Floral Park, Queens last year, we feel the loss of the Dewey camp days at their home, basking in the sun and taking boat rides out into the Massapequa waters from their backyard dock. And we long for those days again and the tug of when we can gather to chew the fat and scuttle butt about the marine biology experiences of yore and our place in the marine world today. It is impossible to fill the shoes of anyone who has given their all to an organization they so much loved and believed in and dedicated their life to. But I pray that I can follow in the footsteps of someone as inspiring as Lou, as a teacher and leader who has guided us and who has and continues to inspire my life. It is an honor and a privilege to accept the nomination of president following your tenure. And it was and is a privilege to have you as my mentor, nurturing my growth and learning still more through osmosis from your leadership. We honor you by having you here tonight to share our stories with you as you have touched our lives to unimaginable depths. Your leadership and unmatched talent give us all the confidence we need to take Nesmia to new heights. We were so lucky to have you at the helm charting and navigating the course for us all these years. And I hope to validate and affirm yours and the board's choice as the years go by. I am grateful for the board's support and I can't wait for more opportunities beyond the never ending phone calls to collaborate with you, Lou, and our beloved board. Your leadership in everything that takes place in the organization and beyond, and your values are bestowed in everyone who has the pleasure and good fortune of knowing you. Like her deepness, Sylvia Earle, who was a deep ocean explorer and who built research submarines, and the shark lady, Eugenie Clark, who also explored the oceans and was an authority in marine biology and shark behavior and who promoted marine conservation. And finally, his deepness, Jacques Cousteau, who too was an ocean explorer and the inventor of the aqualung, 
we honor and anoint you the title of Moses Soul for your lifelong dedicated outstanding contributions to marine science education and conservation. And now we invite everyone to write in the chat box the number of marine science and nautical terms you heard with no duplications and to also now continue this reminiscing with your reflections and friendship stories and encounters with Lou. Beautifully said. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you, Lisa. Okay, so. Oh, let, Ka let Karen. Uh, so wait, know. so so first up is uh, Anita uh, to be followed by Karen. Go ahead, Anita. Uh, yes, well, um, with the two minutes I'm allowed, I can't yeah. make. A no, you can make it into five, Anita. Keep uh, going. <laughs> no, that's all right. You said you said everything. You said it beautifully. I don't want to repeat. Um, just let everybody um, wallow in what in the beautiful um, words that you said. Every every one of them being true. So I'll just take a little bit of a different trend then. Um, on remembering Lou. Um, I can't remember how many years ago Hugo and I first met you, Lou, in classes, if I remember correctly. Um, Around 1970. When was it? 19 Around 1970. 1970. Okay, that sounds good. Um, but you've been really busy to the hilt ever since. You were busy then. I don't think you ever stopped to come up for air, except maybe when Flo pulled you, pulled you somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but as many of our grad students, uh, which made us so very happy, uh, you chose to become a marine science teacher as, as we became teachers. And as many of the others did, you started marine programs wherever you were. And you taught your students, who now, I understand, are teaching their students. And so that's sort of the cascading trip that we had envisioned that many of our grad students would take. And sure enough, you did, and, and you did a wonderful job at it. And during your busy career, just to make things more personal, you even taught at my high school, Oceanside. And then, to my surprise, you taught at the Aggies College. And that was a big surprise because if they hadn't hired me to teach, quote, an experimental marine course, one course, Back in 1965 through 1970, I created the Department of Marine Science there when I left to go to the health department. And that's where you taught. Because originally the Aggies didn't think that they could mix a marine program um, with the apples and the pigs um, and the cows and all of that. And sure enough, between us, <laughs> that's where we taught at the Aggies. So you then became a big part of Nismia. And you've kept it going now and leading it to the position where there are 80 something members, which I agree, it's a good number. And I know you're gonna be behind the scenes, even though supposedly you're finished. <laughs> so bravo, you did a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful job leading all of us all these years. And we loved having you as our leader. I think I speak for everybody. Yay. 
That's it. You know, I just remembered, Anita, it wasn't 1970. It was when I started, I was in your class when I started at Dewey, and I, which was 1969. I was supposed to be, I was working in the lab that we had set up at, at Post, and I was supposed to take your ecology course over the summer, but I got hired to teach at Dewey, and it required that I go to, to do right courses over the summer. So... I never got into that ecology class, though. I still I forgive you. So it was 69, <laughs> not 70. You could still enroll <laughs> online. Believe me, come I'd on, love to. Come yeah. on down and I'll take you out. <laughs> Thank you. My pleasure. Lisa? Yes, yes. Go Aaron. ahead, Ka Go ahead, Karen. Can you hear me? I just learned how to do Zoom about an hour and a half ago. <laughs> yes, you're perfect. I'm you're on? Perfect. Yeah, I've been here uh, all day. <laughs> Lou, Lou is just a legend. He's just incredible. I'll give you a little context. I was brought in to set up a program at the aquarium, and the director at the time was um, Jim Oliver, who had been the director of the Museum of Natural History and the New York Zoological Society director and I had a union to answer to and a bunch of people at the zoo that did not want to see anything happening at the aquarium that looked like an education department. So given that, huh, I started looking around and trying to figure out what to do with no secretary, no staff, and no budget. And the word was out that I was hired and there was a parade of people who came in clutching their, their unit. Most of them had horseshoe crab units. I don't know why. And they all said the same thing. They were doing it up themselves at night in their basement and they couldn't get anybody to listen to them. But the buzz was that there was going to be money released in Washington for marine science. And part of this parade of people, which numbered 100 at the 100 number, I thought my head would explode. And they were coming from all over, from New Jersey, the entire Northeast was showing up, teachers were showing up at my doorstep at the aquarium. And Lou was there almost at the head of the line with Harold and came in with 400 ideas of what he wanted to do. And I said, I don't even have a filing cabinet or a phone. I have a broken desk and a chair and that's it. I don't know how to start doing anything at all. And I kept having this parade of people and Lou showed up a couple of times. And I finally introduced him to the director and I said, this man really has my confidence, and I'm not even 100% sure why, but he really seems to have it together. Talk to me, and let's see if we can find some money or something to work with him. And Lou, he talked to you for all of about three minutes, and he said, go, work with him. He's, he's a great guy. He just got it. Um, he didn't need to get a bio or anything else. At any rate, that's how the Junior Docent program was developed, because I kept saying, I don't have any money. I don't, I don't know what to do. And one of your ideas in your little packet of ideas was to do something with the students and get them behind the scenes. And the union was threatening to, to just kill me off, you know, and, and strike and whatever, because they were terrified that the kids would somehow either kill all the collections or worse yet, take their jobs eventually. <laughs> and so they gave me a terribly hard time. But... Lou, you have a rhythm to you and, and this gentle sense and you're a gentle giant intellectually and in every other way. And somehow you made it happen. <laughs> you pick these great kids and then we train them at the aquarium. And I don't know how many of you have been involved in the junior docent program or were junior docents, but Meryl, what is it in its 50th year now? Well, more than that. I think close to, uh, uh, well, maybe about 55 years. Because well, You're you embarrassing know, us in now. Early, early 50 years. I think we started it in, operating. In 71. And it was award-winning and we, you know, authored papers and whatnot about it. And Lou was always on the sidelines. He was always in the background. He was always pumping these kids through and tweaking the program in any way he could. And I was trying to keep the union happy. <laughs> and make sure they didn't kill the program off. And the kids were fabulous. The program was fabulous. And it really stood the test of time. It became a national model. 
-hmm. And it was you, Lou. It was just all you. Because I was, I guess hysterical was the word, trying to figure out how to start a department. Uh, it was a New York State Council on the Arts. It was just for a year. I had to find funding. Um, and I just had much more on my plate than I could handle. But Lou was always there to figuratively hold my hand, um, encourage me, get the kids in order. And um, what I realized was that we really needed to get all of these teachers together talking to each other because they all had passion and they all had their little pieces of curricula that couldn't get past anybody. And so I called a meeting at the aquarium of anybody we could find. And Lou pretty much came up with the names of anybody who was anybody who might be interested. And everybody, we had a geodesic dome that I'd put up and we had the meeting in there and then everybody seemed interested. And we went to the education hall in the afternoon and that's how Nesmia was born. Um, again, with Lou very much steering the conversations and encouraging and uh, he and Bob Abrams are talking bylaws and really making this thing happy and happen and about all I could offer. Am I still on? Things are changing. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, you yeah. are. Keep going. Um, there you are. There you are, Karen. Oh, you see me? Okay, because something changed on this end. Anyway. No, but I, I we, Louis put it put up a photograph of you at the aquarium in oh, this that's... live show. <laughs> 1970. Could you see it, Karen? Not very well. I don't know my glasses on. Oh, anyway. 1975. Um, yeah, and and true to form, Lou was just always very quietly guiding things and interjecting things and bringing all kinds of intelligence to any situation, any discussion at all. And I said, the only thing I can really offer right now is the physical aquarium. So let's have our meetings once we get this thing going. And that afternoon, I think it was, that they started Bob Abrams and you started with the bylaws talking. And Nesmia was born and we started having meetings and forming it and shaping it. And what I found is that, Lou, you were always there. You were always doing whatever. You were kind of plugging holes up and filling in. And um, when Gene King passed away, suddenly um, you kind of stepped in and he was a person who was on the board and just somehow had the interest and the time and the degrees to really shepherd the thing when the rest of us were struggling developing our own programs and he died suddenly and Lou, you just stepped into his shoes and and uh, filled the void. And, and I always, I was always very taken aback by the fact that you weren't a microphone grabber and you weren't somebody that had to be very out there and sort of in charge and the guy, but you were, you were always the guy. And when I took the job at the aquarium, I didn't know what a mensch was, but I do now. And I know that you are, <laughs> you are the marine science mensch of the century. And as I watched you move and, and I fell in love with Flo and you and Flo and I just had this sort of almost unspoken rhythm. You had a rhythm to you and, and we always did at meetings. We'd sort of come together and how's everything going and then you'd be off setting something else up. And I was on the Sea Grant something, the board or something, and um, I was going to some of their meetings and I too had heard that there was going to be lots of money uh, that was going to start. There was a pipeline through Sea Grant at the time, everybody thought, and that there was going to be lots of money. And so Lou and I wound up at one of the meetings together. And I said, I really think the same thing needs to be done here. It's time. There are all kinds of people across this nation that are interested in some sort of marine program, whether it's inland seas or one of the coastal programs. And I said, they don't know each other. They don't have a networking situation. And so very quickly, I think, again, it was within one or two meetings that we got the national going and uh, served on the board of that. And I, Lou was like a touchstone. You could always go back to Lou and get a take. And it was always very gentle and very kind. Um, even when we were laughing at some people's take on, on how things should be done. Uh, but you are just a delight to be around. You are so confident. It, it just defies belief. And the interesting thing about you is that nobody knows for the most part, unless you're doing something like acting as, you know, the chairman of the board, the president, whatever, that you're doing all of this stuff. 
And, you know, I would try the kids, the docents would say, oh, we're going up to Albany. And, um, oh, how are you getting to Albany? Well, we have a bus and uh, we're working on this bottle bottle bill and uh, we're doing this and we're doing that and we're doing a cleanup. And we're, I couldn't keep track of it. And Lou, you were always behind there kind of steering the bus, you know, and you had all of us in the back of the bus, um, sometimes taking credit that you probably should have gotten. So I just want you to know how beloved you are. Um, the proof of the pudding is in so many marine educators, Merrill and Lisa are prime examples, who just latched on to your, your way of being and moving through the planet and looking at the marine environment and figuring out ways that are not confrontational and, you know, don't turn people off, but attract them and get them to bring out of themselves everything they've got. And you always have a feeling with you, Lou, that anything's possible and all one has to do is mention it and Lou will somehow figure out who the people are, who should be working on something and, and how to make it happen. And when it does, you, you never take credit for it, in my estimation, and I wound up going up to Norwalk and opening that facility and then out to East Hampton so I could work with all the rich people who were chairman of the board and steering them to you guys. Um, and again, Lou was just always there. You, you don't seem to age um, in terms of <laughs> your, your energy level and your compassion for people and your drive. I mean, I don't know at what point probably being one of Hugo's students and working on Anita's curriculum <laughs> uh, did an awful lot uh, to get you launched, if you will. And I'm so happy that you're still up in the stratosphere, turning everybody on because I think we all love you. And I don't think I've ever heard you be confrontational with anybody, um, but you just always got things done exactly the way you wanted it, like the junior docent program, even though the union didn't want you and they didn't want the kids and they learned to love them <laughs> and love you and they were just so happy they couldn't get enough of your kids and when other people joined in the program um there was just something very special about the students you sent to us it, it was like they had fairy dust on them or something they were just very very involved and very good kids and um like sponges, they were just receptive to everything. They wanted to be like you. I think you were a great role model for so many hundreds, probably thousands. Thousands, thousands. Yeah. thousands. So I love you, I love Flo, and I love slogging through salt marshes occasionally, whether it was on paper, on slides or whatever. Um, you were a great touchstone and you really, um, you really, have graced us all with your presence and everything that you've done. So kisses to you. That's all. Nice, Sarah. <laughs> Sorry, did you say Sarah? Yes. <laughs> oh, Meg had a theory that we're going in reverse age order and that makes me <laughs> maybe a little older than I actually am. <laughs> um, well, you two have said so much that I did write some remarks down, but there's a lot of repetition. So I'm just going to say the unique ones, which are that it was like I knew Lou, I get, I started teaching in 1987 and I joined Nismia, you know, within the first couple of years of teaching and Lou was always there, Lou and Bob Abrams um, and many others, but he was like, you know, the rock, as you've been saying. And then we got to work together in 2006 on the first conference and that was amazing. Um, I wrote down webmaster, what will we do? <laughs> In my notes. Um, but just like Karen was saying, like Lou is always so good about um, acknowledging people for their efforts and, and he's always on the awards committee and he's giving awards and I've gotten a couple special awards and he never, it's like he never wants any uh, accolades himself or, you know, he's, he doesn't need to be in the spotlight or, but I think we all need to be in the spotlight from time to time. So this is your day, Lou. This is your evening. Uh, our opportunity to, to put the spotlight on you because you're amazing. Um, and I wrote down about trips, how great they were, even if it's like an early morning trip went out at uh, Southampton for the conferences, you know, Lou would be up at 7am to go wash, 
looking for horseshoe crabs if that's what people wanted to do. And then the last thing I'm going to say is, although I've never met Bonnie in person, um, I do own some of the cards that she has designed. Um, and it was great to work with Dave at Hofstra. So I, oh, what? Wait, no, no, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, great to get to know Dave and, 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 you know, I've known Flo for so long that it's like, it's like you guys were saying like a family unit. It's like you get Lou and then you get the whole amazing Siegel family. <sighs> thank you, Lou. You're amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, unfortunately, I already left and I was just trying to get him before he did leave. Um, so See, we just gone in reverse age order because <laughs> I think he's older than I am. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I Joe, like his comments. I like his comment. What did he say? He said, hi, folks, I have to leave. When I got the email about a tribute to Lou, I thought, holy shit, did he die? Oh, <laughs> God. <laughs> glad that you're alive, Lou. We're Keep really glad you're alive. Come Thank out you. on some trips with me. <laughs> <laughs> so then uh, we're going to move right to Joel. <laughs> hi, guys. Uh, hi, Lou. Joel. Hello. Hi, Joel. Uh, it's difficult for me uh, to follow such icons as Anita and Karen and Sarah, but I'll do the best I can. Uh, I did not start out teaching marine biology. When I was at Sheepshead Bay High School, I was teaching Regents Biology Honors and Advanced Placement Biology. And then one day, my AP, Jerry Resnick, came to me. We had a marine program at Sheepshead Bay High School, and Barry Smith taught the oceanography portion, and Lou and I had a friend, Lenny Monchik, who taught the biology, uh, the marine biology program. And Jerry came to me and he said, Lenny is transferring to Edward R. Murrow High School. Would you please take over teaching marine biology. I said, Jerry, I have absolutely no training. He says, I have somebody, I have two people whom you can go to as resources who will help you. One of them was Lou Siegel and the other one was Mickey Kahn. And they guided me. They introduced me to the most marvelous educators I have ever had the pleasure of knowing. They got me involved in the national organization. And after a year, they cut the umbilical cord and I was on my own. And I've been blessed to have rubbed shoulders with some of the finest teachers in our education system and Lou is certainly one of them. And he gave me his uh, lab book. And I was looking, I don't know any of this, Lou. And he said, you better learn it. <laughs> so I had to learn it. And uh, through the years, uh, Lou has been uh, a guiding light for me. And it was fitting that when I got the Founders Award in 2016 at Southampton College, it was Lou who was the one who gave it to me. So everything came around full circle. So Lou, I'd like to thank you for enriching my life. And I'd be so bold as to say, I'm sure you have enriched all of our lives. Great, thank you. How about Meg? That was beautiful. Yeah. Perfect. Very good. Um, oh, Adam. Oh, he already signed off. I was going to say he yeah. could go. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I met Lou when I was a baby teacher. I think it was like my second year as a high school teacher. And um, so I was like 22 or something like that. And much thinner also. Um, and Lou has always been so inspirational and so supportive of everyone. Like he 
was so encouraging. And I remember like that first year, Lou, and you, you bring this up. It's like, I just wanted to take all the books home because we had nothing at my school. And you were like, here, here's more books, take more books. And, you know, and just wanted to help me however, you know, however you could. And I was able to start a marine science program at the school that I was teaching at, which is actually still going after all these years. And I haven't been there in 16 years now, um, which is amazing. And so Lou was always there to like guide and give ideas and encourage and all of that. And when I came to Mercy College and I had to run a summer program, who did I call to come help out and to come teach some water quality and all of that to my students? That was Lou. He he was right there, ready to help me, ready to share his knowledge. Um, and I have to say, even my husband is always inspired by you, Lou, because he has gone on some of the field trips with you at the NISBE conferences. And he's like, that guy knows so much. And he's so, he just found you so, such a great teacher and so engaging. And he felt like he learned so much from you on these like little field trips. Like he talks about it fondly. And it's probably been like two or three times in the last 20 years, you know, um, but truly, truly wonderful. And just seeing the impact that you've had on so many educators, so many students, and so many people in general um, is truly inspirational. And very glad to count you as a friend and a mentor and appreciate all the work you've done for this organization as well. And you, you know, we're not letting you actually like escape <laughs> there though, right? <laughs> to be clear. Thank but still, so, thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Meryl. Okay, well, um, Lou, you, you made me what I am today, nuts. <laughs> anyway. um, but uh, my, my feelings really echo what, what everyone else has, has expressed. I mean, you really, um, over for over 50 years, you really um, in, inspired so many people and supported so many people. and. As, a, as an adolescent in high school, you really prepared me for a, a career in marine science and you shared your passion and knowledge with me. And then thanks to Karen Hensel, my first real job, uh, who, who made my dream um, come true. And so you have really been so, uh, tr you know, you have transformed thousands of lives in many different ways. So we all love you and thank and thank you for enriching our lives. And I sh share everyone else's uh, sentiments. Ditto, ditto, ditto. <laughs> right, we, we all love you, Lou. And uh, well, you know, we're not gonna let you go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so now is it my turn? Wait, I'm going to call you at two in the morning because I know you're up at that time writing out stuff for Nesmia. I've looked at the timestamps on everything. <laughs> Actually, this week I called Merrill at two o'clock in the morning. I was up too. <laughs> <laughs> I got a phone call from a security saying that an alarm went off. Mm. And I thought they said Merrill Kafka, but it wasn't. It was my sister-in-law, Merrill Kaplan. But at two o'clock in the morning, they woke me up and I couldn't hear what the guy was saying. So I said to Flo, should I call her? You know, so we called Beryl at two o'clock in the morning. She was up, you know, so whatever. But um, hey, at this age, I got to use every hour. We <laughs> got so much to do. But thank you, everybody. It's great to see, especially Karen, who we haven't seen for such a long time. You know, it's great to see Karen and and of course, besides this buddy over here who really thought up a lot of the things that we ended up doing, uh, you talk about not getting any credit. She doesn't get credit for, for any of it, but she really deserves a lot. But thank you, everybody. It's been great working with you guys. And I could tell a little story about each one of you, but maybe I will. <laughs> well, I, well, I also yeah. want to, um, oh, well, I, 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 let me know when you're done. I don't want to interrupt you. So yes. Meryl and Lisa, as everybody knows, were my students in the 1969, whatever, when we started at John Dewey High School with Harold Silverstein, you all know his name anyway, you know. And when we started on the Marine Bio, Bio Committee, Joel was there. And um, throughout the years, Hugo and Anita were always there at support and so on. And we finally cajoled them to becoming co-presidents at some point along the way. 
and uh, talk about having a tremendous number of uh, student followers, uh, Hugo and Anita, unparalleled, you know, yeah. and um, and Karen and her job at the various aquariums and, and things that she did and the things that she started that nobody had ever done, and especially, I'm sure uh, you'll appreciate me, so no woman had ever done it, you know. <laughs> and Karen was there right. doing these things that uh, a lot of those guys didn't do or didn't want to do and so on. And uh, Dewey was a really fantastic school. Um, you know, I'm still in touch with all, many of the kids. Many of them went into the sciences and so on. Um, once I showed a slideshow and I showed this little kid, you know, very diminutive kid with a, a, a sailor's hat on. And um, uh, oh, I met, I met this, I'm telling it backwards, okay? I met this tall, thin, good-looking lawyer type guy at one of the reunions. And he said his name and I said, oh, I remember you. You were this little tiny kid with the, with the, he used to do the Dosen program at the aquarium. He says, Me, and, oh, and he was with his wife, who was also a tall, statuesque woman, you know. And um, and I said to him, I remember you, you were this little kid. He said, I was never a little kid. <laughs> I was never little, he said, you know. And he was like six foot two or something like that. And his wife was also six foot. And then I, he sat through the slideshow. And in the slideshow, there he was at four foot standing in front of the uh, Sapayanooks, uh, uh, the, uh, the walrus's uh, um, pool Aquarium. at the aquarium, you know. And afterwards he came up and says, I have to apologize. He said, I don't remember myself before yeah. my growth spurt, you know. <laughs> so, and, and Flo and I really remember when Megan said about the, oh, when uh, Megan said about the books. <laughs> I mean, she and Kira were in the back of the room at South, at Southampton, buying every book that we put at the auction, then she came up and she says, I don't have any money left. Is it okay if I still, oh, if I owe you the money? I said, don't worry about it, you know? Right. <laughs> and, uh, and of course, Joel started out not knowing anything perhaps, but he ended up writing the definitive curriculum. He made this encyclopedic record of all, everything that the committee had been doing for marine science, which is on the webpage, by the way and uh, the whole curriculum. And then of course there's Sarah, who's unbelievable. She's talking about having your fingers and everything. I mean, she really uh, th does the, uh, the budget and everything else for almost all the conferences for the last 20 years, you know. <laughs> and I'm sorry that I won't be at next Saturday's party, but I'm playing my violin in a holiday. Right. Concert. You know, how many concerts do you have this month? Four? Well, a lot, yeah. A lot, a lot of concerts. <laughs> and I went to one of Sarah's concerts. It was I was so impressed, but it was so much fun. It, it was really amazing. So if you ever can make it, you should really go. It's but not next Saturday. Go to the go to the barge. <laughs> right. And uh, and of course, Merrill is a fellow sea gator. So there's that link. That link also. And her mom, Kinahara, is going to be a hundred. Right, yeah. in the next month or two, and uh, she's oh. a wonderful person. And I didn't make you crazy. Some of it was genes, you know. <laughs> so some of yeah. it was genes from your mother who yeah. could tell yeah. the dirty jokes better than you. <laughs> Give her my love. Well, we. I'm just saying, uh, we are also blessed with such, um, to be among such a, a stellar group of of educators and scientists and just dedicated people. It's it's. it's it's a pleasure, really, an honor. Yeah. It, it warms uh, our heart, really, to say that we know you and um, and we still do things with you. And uh, I don't, I have not heard that from anyone who's my age even say that about a teacher that they had, that they're still doing things with that teacher, if that teacher's mm -hmm. still alive, but mm -hmm. but also that their teacher has influenced their life so much as as you have mine and, and everyone here in, in some way. Well and teachers are really that. teachers are really important, okay, people, as evidenced by this, you know, and Joel and, and uh, Anita and all of you have your students and we'll have your students in the coming back in the future. You know. Yeah, as we like to say in some of our promotional, well, our marketing for, well, solicit, solicitations for money, 
Teachers make all professions possible. Right. You, you, made our, our, you made our pr professions possible. And in our family, on all those conferences that we brought Ariel to from yeah. when she was, what, 14 years old? Right. She and Flo, Flo sort of adopted her. And um, I think I remember her at the years. house much younger than 14. Yeah. yeah, well, she's going to be 37 in another month. Uh, I wanted to just, uh, do you mind if I interrupt you, Anita? I'm sorry. Uh, no, no, I'm finished. I just wanted to remind them how they also took care of Ariel. Yeah. <laughs> the well, next generation. I, I wanted just to uh, say uh, something, read something that's two sentences. It's light, but uh, this is written about a boy talking about his father. But if you substitute a teacher instead of his father, it still pertains. And it says, when I was a boy of 14, my father was so ignorant, I could hardly stand to have the old man around. But when I got to be 21, I was astonished at how much the old man had learned in seven years. <laughs> okay. May I say something before we close at some point? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Add on. One of the things. Thing. When, when I had all those teachers showing up desperate for me to do something for them, and I couldn't, um, I guess my hope was, and, and Lou really encouraged me to keep thinking in those terms, was we needed some vehicle for getting everybody together so that they could talk, share materials, network, and grow in whatever way they could. And um, when I look at Nesmi now, I mean, I've got goosebumps now just thinking about the fact that not only did that happen, but you guys are still going and you're still networking and inventing stuff and developing stuff. And what really hits me is that Lou Siegel is, if you did an ethogram and you're in the middle, every single one of us has some incredibly strong line, you know, to mm -hmm. Lou. And that passion that you had, that we're all talking about, that rhythm, whatever you want to call it, your spirit, has infused the organization. And you just look at your board and you look at the way you're all talking about things. And I know that organizations kind of ebb and flow. And, and in the beginning, there was this incredible need for people to get together and talk and learn about each other and share curriculum and try to figure the game out. And how do you get a department started and all that? And now I think there's going to be ample opportunity to take it in some other directions, given, you know, the way the world's working with all this technology. And mm -hmm. I just, Lou, I just know that you're going to be in the background helping shepherd it, whether you do stuff or not, because everybody loves you and respects you so much that words kind of fail us all. <laughs> That's all. Thank, <laughs> thank, you, for, thank you. Thank you. I, I want to just add, I don't, Lou, I don't know if you read it. Uh, Adam left and he left something in the chat and it Excellent. says, I have, I've known Lou as long as you all have. I have, I haven't known Lou as long as you all have, but in the short amount of time I have known him, it is apparent that he has the respect of anyone who he has come in contact with. He mm -hmm. serves as an inspiration to me and I am honored to be working alongside such a level-headed fair person. And then, um, uh, uh, sorry that, uh, that Artie Koppelman couldn't, couldn't stay longer. I would have liked to have heard what he uh, wanted to say. Uh, maybe we'll get that anyway. Artie, but yeah, just Lisa. So Artie Koppelman, founded along with one or two other people, Okinos, which was oh. the first organization, oh, okay. local organization to preserve the whales. And uh, they did a lot of education work. Uh, the other guy was Sam Sadov, was the president. Yes, yes. And they did a lot of work to save the whales before anybody knew that the whales needed to be saved. And uh, so I know Adi for uh, early, the early 70s also. And um, we've worked together on a lot of projects over the years. So, and he's he's unbelievable. He goes every weekend, he's either seal watching or whale watching every weekend throughout the year. And uh, he's really unbelievable. So that's what we should do. We should really do a field trip with him. Um, 
And I just want to ask, um, has, has uh, anybody guessed the amount of marine and nautical terms in, in, the, in the preamble to all this? I counted it out as... Drunk, drunk. 20. How many? 20. 20. Okay, that's a good number, but it's really 46. Wow. So, so there were 46 nautical terms. Some of them I even Googled and looked up for myself, and I learned a lot about <laughs> how to say goodbye <laughs> in nautical terms. But um, it, it, was, it was a lot of fun. Um, first of all, it was a lot of fun writing my thoughts down and reflections down uh, about... Um, my relationship with you, Lou, and you, Flo, and just um, just recapturing those years while I was thinking about all of that. And it was also uh, amazing trying to put this together because in years past, we wouldn't be dealing with Zoom and we would be having it probably in person and we, keeping a secret, I think, was a lot easier. And nowadays... <laughs> When you send out something in an e in a, an email or in a Zoom announcement, you have to send out the same thing, but go around the person's back and send it out to a selected group of people who who they who promise not to say anything. So it was um, it was definitely a little a little challenge because of the technology, <laughs> but it was all a lot of fun putting it together. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Welcome. You're welcome. We love you. All right. Take care, guys. Bye. We love you. Hello. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you, everyone. Oh, for are, we had, are we Thank going so on to the regular meeting? No, we're done. We're done. Okay. <laughs> oh, I have some updates. Um, based Meryl, on Meryl, we tell you a story. Is there going to be Zoom on the barge? Will we no. be out in? No. No. no zoom on the bar. Not Anita. <laughs> no. Okay, just two quick updates um, that were in the minutes. Uh, David Gruber, he's going to be away. I think it's going to be in Alaska, so he was not able to be a guest speaker for the December party. But he was very honored and flattered that we contacted him. And I said, "Good, think about our, you know, um, annual meeting." Uh, so he, he's very receptive to that. Um, uh, Christina Tobich from the Brooklyn Bridge Park Conservancy, you know, she wanted to try to schedule a, a group whaling this winter. And it, the, the sighting is, is no good in the winter and the climate is terrible too. So I convinced her that we should all do uh, whale watching um, with NESMIA and the New York State Outdoor Education Association and the Brooklyn Bridge Conservancy. So we'll get we'll organize a date in the summertime, maybe in July. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you. All right. I'm Thank you, everybody. Bedroom. Thank you for coming. Okay, so bye. Thank you Karen, it's great to see yeah, you. Great seeing and you, Karen. Great to see you all. Bye, bye and everybody else. Bye. And I, would put, bye, I would put my vote in for the Maritime College. That's where Dick went. And it's a really <laughs> good school, and they have a sailing program. So maybe they'll let you all sail. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They have a bunch of shields. All right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Good night. Good night, everyone. What a, what a, what a, what a night. Group.